Vortex. I gotta talk about something that happened earlier today because it was very, very funny and totally classic Amy Gross. So, um, in case you missed the last video, I was doing a, a video about, um, today's my 37th birthday, and uh, I had arrived at my parents' house so I could say goodbye to my, my brother and his girlfriend. Um, and I, I showed up like right when they were leaving. Like I was shooting a video and then they opened the door and I said something about it. I said something about it and then it happened. Like within minutes. Like I'm just amazing that way. That's why I'm a living comedian, as I've stated. But, yeah, so, they were the people I was talking about. Um, I've mentioned that um, everybody's got a family member that they wish they could dispose of. Let's be honest. Let's be honest, let's do something weird here in America, okay? I don't like feeling that way. In fact, I've tried not to feel that way. I'm not lacing my boots again, y'all. Because you're wondering what the fuck she doing, why she keep looking down? She staring at her crotch, what she doing? Yeah, man. A moth flew out earlier, so that was exciting. But anyway, no, I promise I'm actually lacing my boots, okay? See that? That's my boot. I promise. I promise is what I'm doing. But yeah. You know, I kind of figured that I was that family member. Because I'm the crazy conspiracy theorist in the family. one that's always talking something that nobody wants to think about they just want to keep watching the damn Macy's Day Parade no questions they're just so boring you know like they're so classic American TV watching GMO loving family like they're just totally unconscious of so many things and so that's why I'm the black sheep but I've grown into like loving and appreciating my parents even though I feel like they kind of screwed up I think that I was already schizo before they adopted me and I think that my brother was probably already a narcissist before they adopted him but I know that there's just a lot of stuff that he hasn't been willing to face that I have you know because I've always like stared at it dead in the face, you know, like, I mean, that's why I was a raging alcoholic, and that's why I made all the mistakes that I made, you know, I allowed myself to be possessed by the devil, you know, <laughs> like, I was chasing my shadow self, but because of that, I really, really understand myself, and in understanding myself, I understand the world, and, I mean, I psychoanalyze for fun, but, It's like my parents today, they were like, y'all need to stop judging each other and get along. What kind of resolution is that, Dad? Like, I don't really understand. Like, he's a piece of shit narcissist that only cares about himself, that has no empathy for others. Like, the only way that he does anything for anybody is, is when it benefits him so he looks good. And that is so he can compete with everybody else because he's so blatantly insecure. It's really not funny. I mean, narcissists are probably the most unfunny people and they definitely can't take a joke. And they definitely can't take criticism because it's like they're always looking for that. Like, oh, th this person is judging me and this person is being really 
ugly to me. And it's like, they're just asking you a question or like, he's always projecting. So like he belittles people all the time, but he thinks that he's always being belittled. But yeah, why, why would I want to be around somebody like that? All because I'm related to them or whatever. He's 10 years older than me. He ain't never been in my life. And he used to send me texts like, I'm sorry that I was a bad brother. I'm sorry. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, well, I wasn't there for you. <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do for me? It's like, can you give me money or something? You know, <laughs> it's like, I don't. Because he's not capable of, of, like, anything genuine. Like, everything's superficial. And I've always felt that way about him. Like, long before now. I mean, I know that I've changed significantly because, like, there are so many situations that I've been able to handle and so many positions that I've put myself in where, you know, 10, 20 years prior, like, I wouldn't have been able to handle that shit. So... It's like, I help out my parents, and they're just really impatient, you know, like, they're boomers, and everything's really meticulous, like, it's totally in its place, and it has to be in its place, if it's not in its place, Amy, 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 what are you doing, what are you doing, you know, they always have to raise their voice about everything, I used to take that shit personally, and I don't anymore, now I just let it ping, 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 kind of like your insults, so I don't care, it just ricochets, and... My brother is like the complete opposite of that. Like he hasn't done any work on himself and all it's like obviously he's kind of fucked up. He admitted that he was narcissistic. Okay. Narcissistic an adjective, not narcissist. A type of person that nobody wants to be around. And I mean I think that he has confidence in things that he's good at, and he's not terrible at everything. It's just that his social skills are just for the purpose of making him look good. So he doesn't have the capacity to really care about other people. So, like, even if it seems like, oh, he hates me, and he doesn't want anything to do with me, and all he does is cut me down, it's like, no, he, he cuts everybody down. That's what he does. and. He competes with me because he doesn't know what else to do. Because he doesn't have the self-awareness to like see himself. Like he should be competing with him. Trying to be the best person that he can be. But since he doesn't do anything wrong, why would he try even harder? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not just trying to talk shit about him. I told myself that I wasn't going to do this, but here we are. Everybody deals with somebody like this, though. So I know that it helps other people to hear this like exactly what I'm describing um you know usually when somebody's a narcissist it's also like paired with some other personality disorder in cluster B like I'm saying schizophrenia is the best one we are the easiest to deal with it's crazy how we get such a bad rep it's just because we say things that make people feel uncomfortable and we question the social norms and authority and we don't believe in time Okay, that's why, because we don't follow all the codes, you know? It's like my brother just like proved all these points that I was trying to make to my parents' friends about the differences between like the boomer generation and millennials. And like millennials just don't have any like concept of time or whatever. That's what they were saying. But I told them that just because somebody is on time and just because somebody presents themselves a certain way, it's like, yeah, their image is great, but what if they're a piece of shit? What if nobody wants to work with them? I don't care if you show up on time. I don't care if you show up 10 minutes early. If you're a fucking asshole, I don't want you here. I would rather work by myself. I would rather stress the fuck out than work with an annoying asshole that obsesses about time and, oh, I'm a good person and I'm a better worker because I make sure to show up when I'm supposed to be there because I don't question the rules. I just follow them, you know? Boring. Boring, boring, boring. So you don't follow the rules for the right reason. Like, you can say all day, like, oh, I don't want somebody to be inconvenienced, or I think about other people. No, you think about yourself looking bad to other people. 
So it's not about you being good because you should be good or because you want to be good or because being good is the right thing to do. It's all about your image. It's all about looking good, sounding good. See, this is what I'm talking about. It's just superficial, you know? But my parents, it's like they're that way too, you know? So that's why I'm the black sheep, like I've been saying. I'm just like so fucking real that nobody knows what to do. They kind of freak out. And my brother kept asking me, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you don't want to know. Because like, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me anyway. Because it is annoying. And just, just to let you know, if you're annoyed with any aspect of my character, if you're annoyed with my personality, I'm probably 150 times more annoyed than you think you are because I have to be this on a regular basis. And that's what I think about whenever I'm dealing with people that I don't like. I just wish that they have more awareness of it You know, if they did, they'd kill themselves. For sure. For sure. That's why I always told my brother never get on psychiatric medication because I have a feeling that, that he would kill himself if he doesn't kill somebody else. He'd probably like kill all the women in his life, myself included, because we invalidate him enough. And obviously, like a narcissist dude is gonna have like a major problem with his mom. And I see that like every time he's around her, it's like, I was just like studying him and it's so crazy to me that like people just, they're not the slightest bit inquisitive about things that they should be inquisitive about, you know, like, why is this person behaving this way? What makes a person act this way? You know? And people just aren't really curious about that enough. You, so you, you have a problem with other people, but you don't want to understand why they're that way. But what kind of sense does that make? So you don't actually care. It's just surface level. Once again, AstroTurf. So many people in this country are fine with AstroTurf. If they never had to cut their grass again, they'd be fine with AstroTurf. And that's how they feel about pretty much everything. They don't care if the news is real. They don't care if the medicine is poison. They don't care if the food is also poison. They don't care if the air they breathe is also poison. They don't care if the people that provide them entertainment are doing all kinds of sick, twisted, sadistic things for their own entertainment, okay? They don't care about all the secret clubs and all the symbols that are like the occult or whatever. It's like as long as they can just lie to themselves about their country and about their society and everything, they, they'll just continue to do that up until the point where all these lies like eventually kill you. Really? No, but I'm, I mean, yeah, in some kind of way it does. It definitely destroys their ability to think, you know? It just seems like people aren't interested in the truth. And that's just really disturbing. That's the world we live in. So it's like, that's why, you know, psychological problems that I have where I let it all hang out and I'm way too open and honest about everything that's wrong with me and I smoke weed and I share my opinions with the class, whether they want them or not. I've figured out how to gauge that a lot better as of late, but it's like so many people that have a problem with that 
it's because I'm making them uncomfortable in any kind of way. Whereas, like, narcissists, borderline personalities, histrionics, sociopaths, whatever you want to call them, it's like they all get their way because people... They don't know how to approach the situation because they haven't thought about it enough. But I feel like it's it's easier for them to deal with a person that is horrible and treats everybody around them like shit and is super demanding, super bossy. They're not even a quarter of what they think they are. It's like we cater to those pieces of shit. Whereas people like me are the problem I'm sorry, if I sound like I'm playing the victim, I feel like such a piece of shit for that. Because I'm not. I'm not a victim. It's just, it's just annoying. And I know that everybody deals with that. So it's like, they know that their behavior, though it might not be tip top, but it's a thousand times better than some family member who just gets their way all the time. And it's like, everybody caters to them. But it's like, you see that though with, with siblings, where it's like they're competing with each other and they're always trying to like outdo their sister, their brother, or whatever. And you see this with marriages. I mean, competition, like people shouldn't be having that shit. People, if you're related to somebody, like you need to be on their team. But I can't imagine what it's like to just be like that every single day you wake up, just in constant competition with everybody else because you have no self-awareness. So... You know, for that reason, like, I feel for my brother. But, you know, I feel like my dad's, like, really narcissistic, too. I don't... I don't think he has narcissist personality disorder, though. He doesn't react like that to criticism. I mean, he might disagree with it, but... It's like... This is Elliot, by the way. I brought Elliot to be my companion. Just in case, like... Shit went down at my parents' house, but then, you know... Uh, the people that I thought were gonna cause some trouble left before, before they could. It's just really awkward, dude. Like, being around narcissist people, dude, it's just terrible. Nobody likes being around people like that. But see, that's what's crazy to me. It's like my parents are in such denial of that. Like, they're in such denial of the fact that there's something significantly wrong with him and the way that he thinks. And yet they always get on to me about the way that I am. But it's like, I know that I'm this way. I see myself being this way all the time and it annoys me way more than you think it annoys you. But you cater to somebody that has no respect for you, no appreciation. The only reason he does anything for you is because he wants to keep banging that smoking hot Vietnamese bitch though he wants to get on his sister for race mixing. I don't understand. He's just such a piece of shit hypocrite and ugh. Like, oh, I can't hear it anymore. She's venting too much. Such a sweet baby. Look at him. He's so soft. Feel his snout. It's not a snout, it's a trunk. I feel like we've been over this before. <laughs> anyway. No, everybody's got a narcissist in their family, though. Everybody. Everybody's got a narcissist. Everybody's got a schizophrenic. I'm sure everybody's got an obsessive-compulsive personality. That's my dad, because he is, like, 2AT, which is what makes him narcissistic, because he thinks that he does everything perfect. I mean, he tries. He tries. He doesn't use his turn signal, though. I know, because I've ridden in the car with him, and he never uses it on the interstate. Well, because he feels entitled. He doesn't think he has to. You know, that's the narcissism. 
thinking that, oh, you don't have to do what everybody else does. Like, oh, you're so much better, you're superior to everybody. I know that you probably come across that way, though, because of the fact that you hate rules. I hate rules because they don't make sense. If they make sense, I have no problem following them. And I don't just refuse to follow rules because, oh, look at me, I'm so big and bad, I'm rebelling, I'm transgressive. No, 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 it has nothing to do with that. If I don't agree with the rule, I ain't fucking following it. That's more of like a personal choice, like being conscious of the things that you do and don't do. Why, why do I refuse to participate in this? You know what I'm saying? Like people aren't conscious of that at all. They're not conscious of rule following because that's a phase that starts when you're a kid. So the fact that, you know, with what you see involving COVID, you know, like the, uh, what was it? Six feet, you stand six feet away from somebody or whatever the fuck, it's so stupid. I never gave a fuck about that. I was like hugging everybody. <laughs> Including all my Asian friends. I was like, come here, man, pass that joint. Pass that joint. But so, uh, yeah. That's a way that they can infantilize people, like, to prove that they're kids. You see, look at all these adults. Look at all these grown ass people following these communist rules that don't make any sense whatsoever. Now, there were people, you know, such as myself, that wore a mask or, you know, we just didn't want to start trouble, or we're like, you know, I just don't feel like getting into an argument today, you know? It's the same part of me that can gauge whether or not I can talk to somebody about a conspiracy or whatever. Um, having discretion, having discernment, knowing when and where is the appropriate time to react to something, you know, that's something that a lot of people don't have because they're narcissists, okay? Um... So the only reason why they follow any rules, the only reason why they do what people tell them to do is because of their image, because they want to be validated in some kind of way. But, uh... Anyway. You were talking about rules, people following rules during COVID. Yeah, yeah, like... You know, people on Twitter that would change their, like, Twitter profile name to whatever politically correct thing was going on? Like, I mentioned this before, but it's... I need to mention this on stage. Because it is funny. Like, people that are just so politically charged, they have to make everything about politics, including their Twitter profile. So it's not enough that all their Twitter is like totally political and annoying. It's like they have to make the introduction to their supposed internet presence about whatever political thing is going on right then and there. So you see this happen where they change their profile picture or their profile, whatever. Oh, in their profile picture, they're always wearing a mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd be like, my name's Dennis, wear your damn mask, <laughs> you know? Trump hater, number 300,578. Just <laughs> stupid shit like that. You saw it a lot more with Trump being the president because there are so many people that all they did was bitch about him on Twitter, I swear. I don't think they did shit else that entire time. But... Anyway. See, with Twitter, we predicted that everybody was going to be narcissist. Because if you make everything about approval and social status, and you allow the common people to use the same social networks as celebrities, that's obviously gonna be really terrible for the human race. And uh, I never joined Twitter because like, I knew that that was the goal of Twitter. That and to completely destroy context. Though I do think that there are so many positive uses of Twitter. Um, 
a lot of articles get posted, a lot of information, a lot of uh, news stories that don't make the mainstream news because the mainstream news is a bunch of communist garbage. But um, yeah, so if you use social media as like a research tool, it can be really, really beneficial. Um, but even though I'm not on these sites, I can still let it get to my head and it can still be very, very detrimental to my well-being. And so it's better for me if I just stay the fuck away from all that shit. YouTube is bad enough. Rumble is bad enough. But yeah, I don't really see like negative comments. Occasionally I'll check my email and there'll be an email from Rumble saying, oh, this person commented on your video. And then like, I'll look it up and then I'll look them up and there's never any content from them. But yes, it's, um, uh, it's very good to, you know, try to avoid what everybody else does because everybody is like so sick. They are so psychologically, um, unfit. Okay. Like none of these people can handle anything. So I guess it's kind of cool to like, feel like, you know, you're winning. You're winning because you accepted losing in the modern world. You accepted losing in the materialistic culture. But what you've gained is all this insight from being the outcast and observing everybody. So, though it, it does seem like it would be a bit lonely to be so ostracized. It's like we choose to be ostracized, you know? It's like... I'm not going to pretend that I'm interested in something that I'm not interested in. Just like I'm not going to pretend that I'm not really passionate about certain things. Um, but I don't have to tell everybody everything. I used to have to do that, but I got over my borderline personality. Probably because I'm one of the few women that actually possesses self-awareness. But it is possible to get over personality disorders. You just have to like really, really know yourself and really analyze everything and figure out why you react a certain way and stop yourself from reacting, you know? I've noticed that, like, the longer that I've lived my life, and like I said, it's my birthday today, so for 37 years, I've been monitoring my behavior, and I've noticed that, you know, bad behavior doesn't stop completely. Um, I'm still a sinner, and I'm still reckless and irresponsible sometimes. Um, I still get impulsive and buy stuff that I shouldn't buy. But I do it a lot less, and I'm a lot quicker to catch myself in the act. And especially, like, when it comes to shit talk, you know, because I work at a restaurant, and I'm the black sheep of my family, like I mentioned, and I do stand-up comedy. So, yeah, there's plenty of shit that I can bitch about, but it's like, if I'm not doing it in a creative way, then I feel like it's not constructive, and if it's not constructive, then I'm sinning. So... I, I understand that sometimes I just need to blow off steam, but I just want to do that creatively. Like, I want to figure out how to blow off steam in this really brilliant, transgressive way that blows people's minds, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, I'm going to celebrate my birthday with my friend Todd, like we're hanging out, I think we're going to go out to dinner or something like that. But um, yeah, so before I go, I should mention this because it's really, really funny. Um, my mother bought me an ice cream cake, and guess where my dad put it? The fridge. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? So when I went to like cut the cake, it was just like chocolate, it just went everywhere. It was actually really, really funny. I wish I had filmed it. I wish I'd taken at least a picture of it or something, but you know, that visual will always be firm, firm in my mind. And uh, I could, I could be mad about it. I couldn't be the slightest bit upset because it was just too funny.